It concerns me that I don't have a costume, as some YouTubers call it. Something to identify myself differently from other YouTubers. There we go. It's good. We got Jack because it's winter, and it's actually really cold in my room right now. And a beautiful fedora because fedoras are cool. Now, let's get this video started. For anyone who doesn't know, it is the 53rd anniversary of the best sci-fi show ever, Doctor Who. That is completely subjective, as I consider it the best, but other people may consider things such as Star Trek or Star Wars. I thought that with there being no Doctor Who coming out this year other than the Christmas special, I would give a recommendation to some people who are not into the classics yet. This was my introduction into the classic series, actually. And that is the Trial of a Time Lord box set. Uh, I got this box set last year for Christmas, I believe. Uh, I asked, actually, last year for Christmas, all I asked for was Doctor Who DVDs, and that that's all I really got. They, this was the first one I watched, because... Um, I really wanted to watch some Six Doctor episodes. Like, I've seen clips, you know, on the BBC YouTube channel of, like, you know, the Fifth Doctor. I think some of... Mostly, it's mostly, like, the Fourth Doctor is what I saw. Um, <clears throat> and I wanted to get something Sixth Doctor because I didn't have that. I think at that point I, I'd seen maybe the five doctors and I I kinda liked it I mean yeah I really I really liked it actually but it wasn't like it didn't get me into Doctor Who it sorta of just I got it just so I could have something of the first five doctors you know minus the first doctor unfortunately um the reason I just I really like this episode is I feel it's very well written I think the um uh, uh, the main foe the Valyard is uh, a very good idea for a villain, um, as him being the doctor, but not the doctor. It's pretty, it's, it's, it's well worth checking out. Uh, I will give, uh, like, short opinions on each, uh, DVD. It is four different DVDs, and it does sound like a lot, but I, I got through these first four parts, um, which is the Mysterious Plan. Now, I got through this DVD, fairly, like, it, it felt like it was fairly quick. It's only, um, it's, it's only about, it says it's about 98 minutes on the DVD, so about as long as a normal movie, like a short movie, really. Most movies nowadays tend to be almost two hours long, sometimes even longer. The way this is presented is, uh, is very fast-paced in some, in some parts, and I feel like all the cliffhangers are good. The only thing I don't like about some of the cliffhangers is they end this note where will the doctor survive but we kinda know he's gonna survive cause he's in the courtroom in the future and the story takes place in the past um, so some I think two of them ended like that in this I can't remember which parts they were however I think I think it was the first part where the Valyard suggested that it was it might have been the first part don't quote me on this I don't know um, where he said that this trial should not be, or he it was actually it's not a trial in the these first uh, parts, it's a hearing which is slightly different from a trial, but then the Valyard says it should be a trial and that the outcome, um, if the doctor is guilty, is that he is executed, and not just executed and regenerates, where he execute they execute him and he doesn't come back. So, you know, there's very high stakes in, in this. Um, I think the last part does leave a good cliffhanger on these, part four. Uh, leaves a very good cliffhanger as what uh, we have seen what's happened on this planet Ravalox, and which is the planet that the Doctor's on. So, I think, I think parts one through four. I think parts one through four are actually my favorite. I, I usually just watch these four parts. 
and I don't, uh, I usually don't watch the other four. Next we have uh, Mind Warp, which is also very good. I think it's my second favorite. Um, which I like the return of the character Sill, who was in that one episode and did the stuff. That yeah, he did that stuff. It's been so long. It'll come to me. I I know, but it probably won't. Um, but I do like these parts because we it's the it's the adventure right before the doctor gets taken out of time and is put into the courtroom. So it's it's really it's really cool uh, to see what caught like what happened like what did he forget and I feel like the ending where Perry is ultimately killed is a really good cliffhanger that that was a very powerful cliffhanger like tugged at my feels man hurt my feels um I also I also think that um Sill is a well-written villain I've always liked him because he's uh because he's Sill and I feel like um the way the doctor stumbles upon, you know, Thoros. I think it. I think they stumbled on Thoros Beta, or it might have been Alpha. I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, but they find they have this weapon, and they're wondering. There was some race. Um, I think it was the. I think it might have been what they're called, the Warlords. I think. I just find the way that they stumble across. Either Thoros Alpha, or Thoros. Beta, uh, I can't remember. Is uh, is similar to where they stumble upon Ravelox, where um, the reason the Doctor comes to Ravelox is because it's so similar to Earth, where it's like it's got the same rotation and day cycles and stuff. Um, then we get to the third disc, parts nine through twelve, Terror of the Vervoids, which I feel like could be the weakest of the three. However, the cliffhangers do actually hold up where every cliffhanger can actually be a legitimate cliffhanger because it takes place in the future, and we don't know. Maybe the Doctor could see himself. or Well, he already reviewed them, but maybe we could see the Doctor die in the future, something like that. But, I mean, obviously that didn't happen because we got, we got Sylvester McCoy. Um, this one has the vervoids, you know, the plants, the plant monsters, like... This is why you eat your vegetables, kids, or you, they'll turn into monsters. We also get these alien things, which remind me a lot of the ambassadors from the Ambassadors of Death. Which, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but eh, I don't know. There's this one, I, I don't even remember it that well, because I've seen it so little times. Like, I've, I've, I've never really come back to that one a lot, because it's always been my least favorite. I might rewatch it again. You know, <clears throat> I don't I don't know. Then we have the final two parts, which actually I really I really do like these. They're my third favorite, but it's not because I don't like them. It's just because I feel or no, they're my second favorite. I think this one. I'm gonna just say, you know, first favorite, second favorite, third favorite, least favorite, just to get that out of the way. But I like this because we finally get to see the Valyard and who he is. And we also get the Master, which was nice, because I really like Anthony, a I think it was Anthony Ainley, is how you say his, it's, I know it's Anthony, I can't remember, I can't remember how to pronounce the last name, so we're gonna call him Anthony Ainley. But I feel like his portrayal of the Master has always been my favorite. Um, Roger Delgado's Master, I haven't seen a lot. I've only seen him in the Sea Devils. I don't have a lot of Third Doctor episodes, I think I only have the Sea Devils, uh, Inferno, and Ambassadors of Death. And that's, and I, I think a few others, like me, I think I have the three doctors. But, I think, I like Anthony Ainley's portrayal of the Master, I've always liked Ainley as a Master. Maybe that's because I've just seen him in more, um, because he was also in the Five Doctors, and I feel like he was really good in the Five Doctors, um, and, and we also get to see his TARDIS again, which I believe we also saw in the, the first episode when we got Perry with the fifth doctor, which I think was like Planet of Fire or something. I can't I it's been it's been a while since I've seen a lot of the episodes. Um uh, but I really do like Anthony Ainley's TARDIS. Um or the Master's TARDIS is a proper way to call it. But I do like his TARDIS because it's a lot it's like the fifth doctor's TARDIS, but it's just black. It's completely black instead of white. And the reason I've always I love I love the classic TARDIS consoles, but the main problem I've always had for them is they always feel like they they're washed out and they're like really really white. But in which made me think of this Terminus, which I have 
on me for some reason. I don't know why it's here uh, on my desk. But uh, it reminds me of the Black Guardian trilogy and Enlightenment. It reminds me of the Black Guardian trilogy and Enlightenment. In the beginning, um, we got he's got low power because something I think something was draining the power from the TARDIS and he had him on low power and so we got this sort of like orangish glow from the roundels which I felt looked really really cool so uh what happens in parts 13 and 14 this one's only two parts so you know it flies by this one's only 54 minutes so half as long as you know the normal 98 minutes ones this you know half as much so it's um I wouldn't say it's action-packed, but one thing I do like about the Valyard. I can't remember his name, so we're going to call it, we'll just call him the Valyard. I like to call them by the actors' names. That's just something I like to do. Whereas, like, this is Sarah Sutton, and then we have the, the two thingies. Um, I just like to call them by the name. But I really do uh, like the Valyard. He's, I feel like he's a great villain. Um... One one thing, my favorite scene from this episode is when the Valyard starts giving a monologue. And while he's monologuing, he's uh, teleporting through the, the frame. Like, he's in one spot. And it's while he's speaking, he's moving. It's not whenever he pauses and then he teleports. It's while he'll say something, and while he's saying it, he moves. It's really cool. It's like if I were to say something like this. That might work. I doubt it will. Go buy this because they went through an 18-month hiatus, which is something we're currently going through. I don't know if it's 18 months exactly. I don't remember when Doctor is coming back exactly for Season 10, but it's something very similar to what's happening now, which I find to be really, really cool. So hopefully, Doctor Who won't suck. However, I might do a review on Season 10 episodes because... I have nothing better to do with my life, and it's it's just it's just what's gonna happen with this. I might move the channel towards Doctor Who reviews. I would like to do a uh, more in-depth review of this. This has been more of like a discussion, really. Um, to just go by this, listen to my opinion. Your opinion's dumb if you disagree with me, because you're dumb. That's why. That's exactly why. I thought I was being serious when I said that. You're an idiot. Just kidding. I love you all. So make sure, subscribe and like in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Ye. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> that's absolutely lovely. I love that. Oh no. I <laughs> didn't break anything. I'm sorry, I'm so cringy, Dad. Please forgive me.